we just landed here in Vietnam. We're about to exit and find our driver, but this is my favorite part because you walk out and feel like a rock star. We're in Vietnam. I think we woke up 33. 34 hours ago? Something like that, yeah. But yeah. Got a little bit of sleep on the flight, trying not to, or actually trying to force yourself not to sleep, so then we're wiped out and ready to crash right now. 11 time zones crossed. Got an early pickup in the morning, so we're going to hit the ground running. So we're ready to get to bed. Yes. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. We were Definitely not expecting to go back to Vietnam already. Well, just two months after we were there last time, but we got an invite from Max Cruz to come out and check out their new hybrid system. Well, before we get to all the chaos that we know the sea trial is gonna be and we forget to do this, let's sit down real quick and talk about what a hybrid system actually is in a boat. Now, we have always had uh, diesel motors. I love them, I think they're a great solution. We had looked into hybrid and electric propulsion for this new boat because quite frankly, this is probably the perfect platform for it. You have a ton of real estate for solar panels. Um, it's a fast haul, so this regen, which we'll discuss later, uh, is a good possibility. It's a lightweight boat, it's easy, thin hauls to go through the water. Basically, it checks every single box, except for cost. It is not a cheap system at all. And so that is the reason why we're going with diesels. But for the lucky ones that do end up going this direction, this is basically what it is. You do have the option for just doing electric motors if you wanted to. Uh, quite frankly, if you're hopping from marina to marina to marina where you can charge all the time, probably a pretty good solution. For someone that's doing more long distance cruising, you do need a way to charge the batteries. Solar works great, but we've lived off of solar for a decade now. We do understand this limitations, even with a potential of 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 watts of solar panels, there is still some limitations in that to be able to charge a big battery bank. So. What hybrid systems do is they kind of combine um, the ability to charge the bank and the, to propel the boat, basically, to, 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 to move it forward. There's two basic systems for a hybrid. There's a series hybrid and a parallel hybrid. And the difference really is kind of the route, what they're based on. A series hybrid is more just an electric motor setup. So you have, uh, in our case, or, or in Catamaran's case, you have two electric motors in the hull. Then to be able to generate power, to be able to run those electric motors and fill up the battery bank when solar is inappropriate, you would add a generator, a standalone generator, which would go somewhere in the boat, and that's going to act as the charger that's gonna charge the battery bank or as direct propulsion to push you forward with the electric motors. So that is one option for it. The benefit you get with a series hybrid is you can move that diesel motor around wherever you want to, that generator wherever it needs to be. So you can move the weight as needed. You can get the sound in somewhere else, another part of the boat. Negative in my eyes is reliability. If the diesel generator goes down or if you get an electrical strike and you're reliant on those electric motors well you're you're basically stuck you have to do everything just by sales and you have to wait until you can get new parts to fix it because it is a pretty complex system parallel hybrid on the other hand is a diesel motor that they stuck a electric hybrid system on so what that does in in to me for a long distance cruiser, someone that is, it needs the reliability, that needs to be able to, if there's a storm approaching, maybe motor a little bit to get to a safe spot. This is the ultimate system. 
So what what Max Cruz has chosen is um, for the 44 foot boats is a 35 horsepower. It's Beta Marine. It's a UK company, so they call it Beta. Uh, instead of beta. <laughs> it's a, a diesel 35 horsepower motor and it's all mechanical going to the prop. And this particular one that we're going to see has two hybrids, so it's one in each hull, uh, two diesel motors, 35 horsepower in each hull. And what those do is they go from the diesel through a hydraulic gearbox, in this case it's a PRM 150 hydraulic. It goes through that and it goes to a pulley that would connect to your electric motor but on the other end of that is basically just a decoupler, really reliable system, it's just mechanical. And what that allows you to do is you can drive directly, the propeller, the prop, you can drive that directly with the diesel motor. So in case lightning strikes and the whole hybrid system goes down, you still have that full mechanical setup, everything's still connected there, and it's just like any other uh, boat. If you can get that diesel started, you're good to go and you can keep going. So that is kind of one mode of transportation uh, with this. It's, it's six modes overall. The first mode is diesel motor. Second mode is using the electric motor in neutral position for the hydraulic transmission. It, uh, so it's disconnected from the diesel. And what that's doing is the electric motor then is driving the propeller only. So you're using your battery pack and sending power through the electric motor, which is then turning the propeller, moving you forward. So if you want, if you got some extra uh, charge from solar, solar's doing really well and your battery bank's all full, just flip that on a little bit and it's gonna give you that extra propulsion as needed. Number three is kind of a boost mode. It is the diesel motor and the electric uh, motor are both acting to propel the boat forward. Um, it works up to a certain point. The issue you get with it is you can't really easily combine the full power of the electric motor and full power of the diesel motor because then you need to size the prop appropriately for both of those and you end up losing efficiency with that. And if you don't, then basically you just turn the water and boil the water and cavitate and you have all kinds of problems there. So realistically, it's you'd use both of them at the same time. Now the fourth mode is you're gonna use the diesel engine to propel the boat forward, so it's going through the prop, but the extra power that isn't being used to propel the boat forward is now turning that electric motor and it's acting as a generator. So that is helping to fill your battery bank. Um, in one of the cases I'll discuss later, it can power another electric motor if you need to. There's a lot of different possibilities for it and it's just an awesome, awesome way to make sure that you're getting the most efficiency out of that diesel that you possibly can when you're turning at low RPM. The fifth mode is generator mode. And this is just, it's an awesome thing because you don't have to have a separate generator on the boat. In this case, it's a five kilowatt uh, a generator. What it does is you decouple the prop shaft. So if you're sitting at anchor or whatever, and you run your diesel engine, it's sending power through that hydraulic transmission going to the electric motor, spinning the electric motor, and again, that is acting as a five kilowatt generator. So just awesome power you're getting off of this. You're getting into an efficient point for the diesel because it is a fairly good load on the system. When you're sitting at anchor and you need to boost up that battery bank, it's a cloudy day, or you know you're gonna be going a long distance or something like that, it allows you to sit there and do that with a ton of power going in. And then the sixth and final mode, for now, uh, the sixth mode is regeneration mode. And what that is, when we're sailing along and doing eight, nine, 10 knots, the propeller can be allowed to spin. So it's just taking power away from the, the water that's flowing past the hull. It's spinning and that is going through the prop shaft. Again, that hydraulic transmission's in neutral. It's going through the prop shaft and going to the electric motor, spinning the electric motor and generating power. So we're gonna try to test that out and see how much power we can actually generate with this. Just imagine when you're on a long passage doing something 20 days or something like that. If we can even generate a couple hundred watts of power to fill up that battery bank, it is gonna be a game changer. You can run the autopilot, you can um, fill up the bank so when you do get into that wall, then you can use the electric motor as needed. You know, refrigeration, all these different things. We typically use the most power when we're on passage. So if we're able to sit there and generate power with this, whoever has the system is going to be able to use all the conveniences they normally would have in life, chart plotters, radar, and all that kind of stuff running with no fear about battery bank going. 
All right, I had to give Matt the like wrap it up symbol there because he is so excited about these hybrid engines. He could talk forever about them, but hopefully it was a great explanation for you, kind of the basics of it and how it works. But now let's go back to our Vietnam footage where we get to see it in person and test it out, which actually each boat going forward of theirs now has this option. So that's some pretty cool stuff. Let's go back and check that out. Today we are visiting the Tan Van Dong shipyard, which is where Max Cruz builds their boat. Matt and I have not been here in over two months when Hull 6 was still kind of like getting fit out. Uh, Hull 10 just came out of the plug. A lot has changed. We cannot wait to go inside and see the progress that everything has been up to since we've last been here. I haven't, I haven't, no, yeah, exactly. It's Before we're getting into the yard to check everything, we always come into Terry's office to kind of like catch up on everything that's going on. Usually the board behind me is used for drawings because as you know, Matt and I like to tweak our boat a little bit from the design. Terry's right. been great about it, but we always run everything through him. So if you think we're just going off crazy, no, this guy here always gets like a million emails and texts from us saying like, yes, you can do that, it's okay. And I won't say anything right now, but there might be some exciting changes coming to us. Terry's trying to push us over into different things, so we'll let that play out later. But yeah, we're going to just go over a few things and then go out to the yard and check the progress of all the hauls that we saw two months ago. And a couple new ones that popped, too. Flying towards the cockpit. Oh, that's a nice setup. Uh -huh. As soon as you walk into the yard, you're met with the area in which makes molds for the boats. After seeing the plug for the first 48 foot, which is huge, we pass by hundreds of their fiberglass dinghies they make, ready to ship around the world. While we were waiting for the workers' lunch break, where we could quietly tour the hulls and not get in anyone's way, we went to see hull number six, the boat we'd be sea trialing during our visit. It wasn't fully completed yet, as the owners weren't coming to take it for another five weeks, so things like the floors were not in yet. But because they had Graham from Hybrid Marine flying out at this time to check on the hybrid system, this is the week the sea trial was to happen. It's like jumping in. Much cooler. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Oh, this makes me happy. And that's all I want. That's all I really need is to cool this berth. Um, anyone comes and visit us, I don't want to be too comfortable because then they never leave. I make adjustments here. Both of these are exhaust with air flowing out, so maybe I don't want mine right on me. Matt wants to angle right on him. We can both fit in here comfortably. Sexy now. The last time we were here, hull 10 was just coming out of the mold, but now has its major bulkheads in, with a new team ready to go full force on it in the next week. Hull 9 will be the first Max Cruise Terry and his wife Nancy own until the second hull of the 48 is done. Most of the molds for the master hull have been built out with the exception of the shower. And from hull seven and on, all the boats have the workstation in the forward berth. Hull eight is coming along very nicely with the deck and cabin sides as well as the cabin top on. Most of the interior molds have been completed, but the fairing and painting hasn't started yet. And, just like us, there's no island at the sill of the cockpit. Hull 7 will be the next one to splash and has a delivery date about two months after our departure. One very different thing with this hull is they have added an L-shaped bench to their cockpit, which will allow a permanent table. 
an interesting approach we're keeping an eye on, and we'll probably ask Terry to send us photos through its completion. On our third day of sea trials, which we'll get into more in the next episode, we dove further into the hybrid system on Hull 6, how it operates, and what it's like when put into use. Hi there, I'm uh, Graham from Hybrid Marine, and here we are on board the Max Cruise 44, and we're in the process of commissioning the boat, and I'm going to just give you a quick uh, run over of uh, how the hybrid um, control system can be enabled and disabled. So if we come over here, this is our basic screen that you have for the system. Now you see the, the little icons here, this is a propeller icon and we use that for enabling the hybrid. It's greyed out right now, it's telling us it's not enabled. This one here, this is our battery symbol, so if we press that, just let those icons disappear. And here we are, so this is telling us our state of our batteries. We're at 36% here, uh, battery voltage is 49, uh, 49 volts and a drain at the moment of uh, 4 amps. And the, on this craft we have uh, uh, lithium ion phosphate batteries and then our pylon tank units. So if we come back over here again, uh, and I'm going to press this button for two seconds, and that enables our hybrid. So we're now in the electric drive mode, so we can now move the boat forward from the propeller. Actually right now we've disconnected the shaft clutch because we want to run this as a standalone generator, and that's what we're going to do now. So that's as simple as once the hybrid's enabled, we'll start the engine here, here, and we put it into gear, forward gear. And we can see now that the hybrid generator load comes on quite slowly, so as not to give any, any jerking on the engine. And this will work its way up to a, a set at the moment at 80 amps at 48 volts, about 52 volts for charging, so about 4.5 to 5 kilowatts. And as the engine revs come up and the propeller load comes on as well, is that we back off the, uh, the hybrid generator. So at the higher revs, the engine is able to deliver the full, its full power to the propeller without being impeded by the hybrid. So here we are, we're now up at 80 amps. And if we go back to this button here, have a look at our batteries. Yeah, so the batteries are probably, and these pylons are about yeah, 49.5, and we're charging at 78 amps. At this point, it's like watching paint dry as it charges us. <laughs> oh because, my gosh, that's so cool. But we have, a, obviously, we have a hybrid, it's a twin engine system, so we can have this hybrid also running as a generator and we can double the charge right now. Yes, yeah, so right now we're making, what is that, 3,800. Uh, uh, 3.8 kilowatts? Yeah, we're, we're about, if that was 80 amps, uh, then it, it would be exactly under 50 volts, which we will be reaching quite soon. That's about 4 kilowatts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 From Amazing. one, or it could be, we expect that to go up to five, possibly up to six, depending on the, how the yeah. system is. Absolutely yeah. incredible yeah. to be able to do that with one tool. One engine. One yeah. engine, yeah. you have that, yeah. something that you're going to have anyway on this boat. Yeah. And, and, and of course, what you have here is power. we have two generators, because it's the hybrid in the side, we have two separate generators. It gives great redundancy. Uh, and you can generate it twice the power if you should wish to. <laughs> so, no problem. Because no, we're, we're at anchor here, the, the, the most efficient way of generating is when you're on the move. So mm -hmm. you're propelling the boat with the engines, driving the shaft in the normal way. Those shaft clutches are closed. Yep. Yeah, and at the same time, adding a load to the hybrid. So that loads the engines down nicely, gets them running very efficiently. What we're doing right now is we are putting into generator mode. What this is going to do is it decouples the drive shaft. When we engage the diesel engine, it is sending power through the hydraulic transmission, um, the gearbox, and sending that, that thrust is going through the electric motor. And instead of using the electric motor to propel the, the boat, we are acting or using it as a generator. And that is giving us up to five kilowatts, correct? Yep, up to five kilowatts of power is now going into the battery bank, which is incredible. So it allows all the functions of home on this boat. Yep, yep, yep. And stop both engines. So stop. stop. Yeah. One off. Yeah. Off. Right. Now you're electric drive. Give it a go. So my first yeah. time doing electric drive. Oh my gosh! Feel that torque. Right. That's the kind of like a gentle cruise. You probably 
at about uh, three and a half kilowatts per side, so about seven kilowatts total. Oh wow! Okay. How's that feel? Quite slow. Uh, I did actually lose steerage though. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going backwards. I, is one going reverse? Uh, is it possible? It, it feels possible. like yeah, it. it. It is possible. I think that, that's what's happening. Put that one back in YouTube. Yeah. 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 Try it. Okay, put it that way. So now we're at seven. So let's bring it down to 70 now. Three and a half kilowatts per side, so seven kilowatts. All right, that's about five and a half knots per speed. Yeah, yeah, and it's just under three hours on the full battery. So. Yeah, and it's just under yeah, it's a huge current against us right now, but we're still doing five knots, actually true boat speed, through the water because of the current, we're doing 2.3, but right there, you can see how fast that is actually running. We're just kind of playing around testing this. We are using three kilowatts of power. We are at holding a pretty steady three knots of boat speed. So not fast, but we're using so little power that we could keep doing this for a very, very long time with the battery. Seven hours. Yep, seven hours, uh, uh, fairly easy to do that. Just at its current, that's with no additional solar even putting in anything to this to help balance that out. And it would be so simple to do that, even though you are three knots, kind of a low boat speed, but it's not tiring at all. And if you haven't cruised, that is the one of the negatives with the diesel motor is that thump, 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 constantly going off, the humming, the vibration and stuff, it really does tire you out. Um, this is basically silent, so you can just keep going along and yeah, we could crank it up a little bit, use a little bit more power, but it's nice. That night, we went out for an amazing sushi dinner, but I kept the party going afterwards because I had a special event to celebrate. My birthday was only four days away, and I felt like a little bar crawl. We just finished a sushi dinner in the middle of Ho Chi Minh, and now with our group here, it's beginning a birthday bar crawl. So we've got a tower on the way, and then we're gonna head a walking street to a sky bar. So, 40 glasses of beer on your 40th birthday. Uh -huh. I still have to work tomorrow. For our next stop, we headed back to the walking street near a hotel on the river. It had been a pretty long day for all of us though, so we decided two bars was enough and called it a night. I guess my big celebrations will have to wait until I get home again.
peine mort. 